BBC Seven, the home of classic comedy. People have often said I should be in a home, and here I am among the comedy. If you were listening an hour ago, you'd have heard Barry Cryer's profile of Peter Bruff and his little wooden pal Archie Andrews. If you didn't, you can hear it again later tonight with Michaela at 1am. And of course, by this time tomorrow, it'll be available to listen again on the BBC Seven website. Well, today we're beginning a ten-part series of Educating Archie. Listen out for appearances from Hattie Jakes, Max Bygraves and Julie Andrews in this edition from the 30th of October 1950, in which Archie is determined that his bonfire night will go with a bang. We present Peter Bruff and Archie Andrews in Educating Archie. <laughs> Robert Morton, Hattie Jakes, Max Bygraves, Julie Andrews, the Tanner Sisters, and the Hedley Ward Trio. We'll be educating Archie. Oh, what a job for anyone. He's no good at spelling. He hasn't a clue. He tells us three sevens to make twenty-two. It's a problem you can see. To be educating Archie. And here are Peter Bruff and Archie Andrews. Uh, uh, Bruff? Yes, Archie, what is it? Bruff, can I have a word with you before you go out this morning? All right, Archie. But make it short because I have an important business appointment and I don't want to be late. Oh, this won't take a minute, Bruff. Here, let me help you on with your overcoat. Oh, thank you, Archie, very much. And there you are, that's right. Now, put your arm in there. That's the idea. Now, I'll just give it a little brush for you. There you are. Well, that's very nice of you, Archie. Oh, dear. What's the matter? Nasty black mark on the back of your overcoat. Oh? Wonder how that got there. Archie! That isn't the clothes brush, that's the boot brush! <laughs> I'll get the turps. Don't bother, Archie. Don't bother. Don't bother. All right, I'll give it another rub for you. There you are, there you are. It's a nice little rub there. Ooh. Now, look what you've done. You're going to torn it. I'm sorry, Bruff. Well, say what you want to say and let me go. Come on. I don't think there's much point now. Archie, what is it you want? Can you lend me five shillings? No. Half a crown? No. Sixpence? No. Want any boots clean? No, I don't. Archie, I've told you about this before. Every time you borrow money, you lose a friend. All right, lend me five bob and I'll try and get along without you. <laughs> What's this money for anyway, Archie? Well, as you probably know, November the 5th is Guy Fawkes Day, and I... You thought you might have some fireworks, eh? Well, you're wrong, Archie. We've had all this out before. Fireworks are dangerous. Somebody might get hurt. Yes, you might get hit in the pocket. <laughs> That's enough. The money has nothing to do with it. This Guy Fawkes business is, is getting too much. Why, only yesterday, a little boy with his face all painted black and red kept pestering me. You don't do that sort of thing, do you, Archie? It me, bro? Oh, no, no, I, I wouldn't do a thing like that. What if, oh, dear, 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 dear. Well, I'm very glad to hear it, my boy. It's really getting too bad. You know, this little fellow yesterday just wouldn't let me go. Chased me all the way down the high street shouting, remember the guy, remember the guy. Disgraceful, bruv, disgraceful. Yes, he was pulling a little wagon with a, with a horrible looking guy in it. it. Horrible? Yes, dressed in a lot of dirty rags. Oh, it was awful. How frightful for you, bruv, how frightful. Yeah, what did you do, eh? What did you do? Well, in the end, to get rid of him, I gave him some money. It, you, you, you gave him some money? That's right, Archie. He looked so pathetic with his ragged clothes and painted face. He touched me. It's a lie. I didn't lay a finger on him. What's that? <laughs> yeah, nothing wrong. Really, really. Tell me, Ruff, uh, how much did you give this boy? Oh, uh, I gave him half a crown. It, how much? Half a crown. I'm a fool, I know. I, I should have my head examined. You want your eyes tested, too. That half a crown was only a penny. <laughs> what? Oh, so it was you, Archie, was it? So, you wouldn't dress up as a guy. Huh. How could you tell me such stories? Fancy dressing yourself like, like that and, and running down the streets begging for money. But, but don't butt me. How could you behave in such a fashion after all I've done for you? Bring you up the right way? Spend money on your education? You disgrace me like that in front of all the neighbours. Now, listen, don't interrupt when I'm talking to you. You're a thoroughly naughty boy. Not content with begging for money in the streets, you, you try and catch it off me afterwards. But I, I only wanted a few fireworks like other boys and girls. 
I never get any fun at all. <laughs> oh, yes, don't eat your job to me like that. Oh, yes. <laughs> Archie. Oh, dear, dear. Archie. Oh. Oh. Archie. It's no good. You can't get round me now. <laughs> Archie, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be as harsh as that. You didn't? No. Here's your five shillings. Couldn't make it ten, could you? What? <laughs> uh, go on, go on. Buy yourself some nice fireworks. Oh, thank you, bruv. Thank you. Well, I must get to business, and if you spoil my everyday coat, I'll have to wear my best one. Your, 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 your best overcoat? Yes, you know, the new chocolate brown one. It, I'll get it for you, bruh. Thank you, Archie, thank you. It's in the hall cupboard. Archie, it's in the hall cupboard. Archie, where are you going? I've got to undress the guy. What? My <laughs> best overcoat? Well, I'm well. something you did now. Hello, Cynthia. You're just in time to stop the fight. What fight? The fight that was going to start if you hadn't come in just then. Well, and what does my little mind of information know this week, eh? Well, we're going to have lots of fireworks this year, Archie. Oh? My dad's getting them from the shoe shop he works in. Uh, getting fireworks from a shoe shop? Yes. All he has to do is stop wearing suspenders. Now, Cynthia, explain yourself, please. Well, I heard my mum talking to my dad, and my mum said, if you don't pull your socks out, you're going to get a rocket from your boss. <laughs> My mum's promised us we can have a fireworks party if my dad borrows one of the bathroom fixtures from the local pub. If your dad borrows one of the bathroom fixtures from the local pub? That's right. I heard my mum talking to my dad, and my mum said, just you bring home that shower from the coach and horses, then you'll see the sparks fly. <laughs> I just learned a new song, Archie. Oh? Yes, um... All right. Again, this couldn't happen again. This is the thrill of a lifetime. This is the moment divine. Again, this couldn't happen again. This is the thrill of a lifetime. This is the moment divine. Again, this couldn't happen again. This is the thrill of a lifetime. This is the moment divine. Again, this, um... this couldn't happen again. Oh, couldn't it? That's what you think. Again, this couldn't happen. Goodbye, Cynthia. Bye, Archie. Bye. -bye. <laughs> That choo choo sound. I know that soon we're gonna cover ground. And then I'll holler so the world will know. Here I go. I'm Alabama bound. I'm bound for Alabama. The train is taking me home. And when I get to Alabama, never more will I roam. Cause my ever loving baby. She's gonna be waiting there, I know. Oh, tell me, tell me, honey. Tell you what, I'm gonna settle for a train ride and hear the whistle blow. I can hear that choo-choo whistle blow. Watch that engine when we start to go. Now we're at Baltimore, knocking at Dix's door. What's that, Bill? Louisville. We passed that before. Fields of cotton, tell me where I am. Hear that party yelling, Alabama, Mammy, Mammy, get your kisses ready for your honey lamb. I'm Alabama bound to see those boomer parties hanging round. Just gave the meanest ticket man on earth all I'm worth. To put my tootsies in an upper berth. Choo 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 choo. We're gonna cover ground. And then I'll holler so the world will know. Here I go, go. We're Alabama bound. 
all the bulls of Alabama, we're Alabama bound. <laughs> oh, I'm Alabama, off to see the mater. I'm Alabama bound, and uh, a jolly good morning to one and all, and thank you, Hedley Wartrier and the Tanner Sisters. That was wonderful. You know, you really are in a class by yourself. Yes, that goes for me, too. Oh, uh, hello, Andrews. Good morning, sir. I'm looking forward to November the 5th, aren't you? Oh, rather. If there's one thing I like to see, it's the boys enjoying themselves. Oh, good. I want you to have fun, Andrew. Yes, but now... And I'm personally going to see that you have a rip-snorting time. No, it's a wonderful thing. Good. Well, can you spare a copper for the guy? No. Uh, Now, for the first... (laughs) Uh, Now, um, we'll take the first lesson. Oh, now, come on, sir. You must be able to spare a copper. Now, look, Andrews, I'm not made of money. I mean, since I received my salary, I've had to take Agatha out five times. Well, that's a shilling gone. (laughs) A shilling, eh? Just one long round of pleasure, that's it. But in any case, Andrews, uh, have you got a guy? Oh, yes, yes, I've got everything arranged. Uh, Now, this is the chair that we're going to put him in. Oh, that's splendid. Good. Now, would you mind trying it for size? Uh Uh-uh. Oh, no. Now, Andrews, I can see what's in your mind. You want to collect coppers for the guy while I sit in the chair with a funny mask on. (laughs) I hadn't thought of a funny mask. (laughs) Yes, I... No, I I won't do it, Andrews. I mean, what you want are some old clothes, then you fill them with rubbish and a stuffed head on top. Exactly. Now, would you mind trying the chair for size? (laughs) Now, that's quite enough, Andrews, but I shall help you set the fireworks off, providing you keep to the instructions. All right, I'll set the big ones off. No, you won't. You can only set one off and then go to bed. Go to bed? Yes, those are the instructions. Like the blue paper, then retire. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, get in there, Morton. (laughs) I'm cracking away like a well-oiled machine. (laughs) I don't have had a machine, but you're well-oiled. Yes, Now, ease up, Andrews, because we're going to have a good time, and I've already lit the bonfire. You've lit the bonfire? But it's only Monday now, and November the 5th is until the weekend. Oh, dear. Well, we shall just have to keep it from going out. Mm. I wish somebody would keep you from coming in. (laughs) Now, never mind. Now, I've got a lot of dead wood we can use as fuel. Tell me, is old wood better for fuel? Oh, yes. There's no fuel like an old fuel. (laughs) Uh, uh, Oh, Chris. Very crisp. Mm. <laughs> Certainly take the biscuit. Oh, do you think so? Yes, your crackers. Well, uh, well, you know, I enjoyed it. And there's only one thing that I enjoy more. Oh, Robbie, the answer's... Yes? Guess. Guess what? Yes. Yes what? Guess. Mm. Which brings the score to one all. <laughs> oh, Robbie, I'm so excited about the bonfire. You and me going round, seeing the place lit up, and then after a while... He'll be lit up and the place will be going round. <laughs> now, simmer down, Andrews. I say, look, uh, Agatha, I've, uh, I bought you a firework. Oh. oh, you shouldn't throw your money around like that. It must have cost you at least fourpence. I say, Agatha, will you, will you come to the bonfire with me? Oh, of course. I'm glad you asked me. But what sort of firework is this? It's an Agatha wheel. Oh, no, Robbie, Wobby. You mean a Catherine wheel. Catherine won't. That's why I asked you. <laughs> oh, Robbie, so you call it an Agatha wheel? Uh, yes, because if you push it around, the sparks fly off it. <laughs> oh, get in twice, Morton. <laughs> Let's forget all our differences and look forward to the big night. Are any of your friends coming, Archie? Oh, yes, my two closest friends, Tinker and Few. Are they very close friends? Yeah, not if I can help it. <laughs> I should wear a sweater at the bonfire, Archie. Oh, why is that? Oh, so that you can get your clothes dirty. I bought a nickel in the telephone, star my baby's number, got a brr, 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 busy line. I only said don't get your clothes dirty. Oh, I thought you said Rose Murphy. <laughs> Robert 
Morton. Morton, if that's the way you feel, Rose Murphy, indeed. I'll go to the bonfire alone. Please, but, Agatha, let me say no, something. No, don't try to get round me. I'm going. Yes, but if you'll only let me say something. No, you've something, said I'm enough. Just... Now, don't try to explain. I don't hear any more. We're definitely through. I don't want ever, ever to hear your voice again. Never, never, never. And there's one more thing. What's that? What did you want to say? <laughs> oh, yes. This is the voice of the boy. Oh, no! <laughs> You just couldn't resist that one, could you, sir? Oh, well, it's just my living. Well, your living has all been in vain. <laughs> Hello, what's that? I wonder. Here, are you shaking your head? No. <laughs> I've arrived in the proved Armia. Hello, Mr. Vigraves. Here, what's the bell for? Fire drill. I'm going to give you a fire drill in case there's a fire. Hello. Hello. Steady, ma'am. That's the coal scuffle you're wearing, isn't it? No, it's my helmet now. Well, you've dented it. Yes, well, here's the hammer, Archie. Try and straighten it out. All right. Here we are. That's it. That's it. Wouldn't, it some... Wouldn't it be easier if you took it off? <laughs> what, have all the coal all over the place? <laughs> Do you mean to say you've got coal in it? I had to, son, to make it fit. Oh. Otherwise, it's a bit tight round my shoulders, see? <laughs> now, first of all, there are four types of blazes. Go on. Yes. There are uh, one, yes. the coal blazes, uh-huh. two, the chemical, yes. three, the wood blazes, uh-huh. and four, the goater. Goater blazes? And you. <laughs> <laughs> Now, don't ever treat a chemical fire with a pot for. What's the pot for? Make the tea in. Now, <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, uh, now, desist a moment, honey. What would you do in the case of a large conflagration? A large conflagration? <laughs> yes. Take the hat round. <laughs> now, uh... <laughs> now, the son, the first thing to do in the case of a fire is to dial 476. And then what happened? Nothing. It's the wrong number. <laughs> now, Dr. Morton, look, you go up to the bedroom and stand on the windowsill. Well, what for? Never mind. Go up. <laughs> oh, all right, then. Now, son, here we are. And follow me down. I've got the ladder at the window. All right, Mr. Over I go. Right. At the window! <laughs> What's the good of telling me when I'm halfway down? Oh, you all right, son? Yes, I'm all right. I say, what do you want me to do? Wait a minute. Uh, son, here, hold this blanket at one side and keep it tight. All right, I got it. Ready? Oh, uh, Mr. Morton, jump! No! Oh, come and jump into this blanket. <laughs> I can't even see it in any, any case. I know what's going to happen. What? When I jump, you'll move the blanket. <laughs> no, honestly, we won't. Will we, Archie? No, we won't really, sir. Well, I don't trust you. Oh, come on, jump. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what. I thought of a ripping wheat. You put the blanket on the ground, then I'll jump. <laughs> Head like a this, sieve. This I've got to see. Yeah, now, I'll tell you what, then. Slide down the drain pipe, Dr. Morton. All right, I'll try. Look at him, look at him. Did you ever see anything so stupid? And he's silly, eh? Slide down the outside of it! <laughs> Look at oh. oh! Oh, dear! Oh! Oh! Oh, dear, I fell. <laughs> I thought you were playing dominoes. <laughs> yeah. You're telling me you yes. fell. Yes, now, please don't tell Andrews, otherwise he'll laugh at me. I don't think he will. Well, why not? Where is he? I'm under you! <laughs> Hello, Dr. Morton. Where's Archie? I'm here. Goodness, Archie. Are you hurt? I don't think so. But does anybody want to buy a bag of flat bullseyes? <laughs> oh, it's you, Julie. Tell me, what would you do in case of fire, eh? Well, I could sing a song with lots of water in it. It's called the Blue Danube. Oh, well, let's hear it, Julie. Come on, it sounds nice. <laughs> Your 
Thank you very much, Miss Julie. That was splendid. It was full of pep and fire. You know, it's just the thing for Guy Fawkes' night. What's Guy Fawkes got to do with it? Well, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have the night. No night? No, it'd be a 14-day week. <laughs> no, now, I must, uh, I must try and explain what happened. Now, towards the end of the 16th century, there lived a woman, Mrs. Fawkes. And now, for argument's sake, let's say that she had three sons, Guy Fawkes, Robert Fawkes, and Max. Three fearless undaunted, intelligent boys. Oh, blimey. <laughs> yes. Now, you know that Guy always had a passion for gunpowder, and his mother was worried. So one day, she said... Boys, I want to talk to you. Yes, yes mother. mother. Where's your brother Guy? He's down in the cellar, Mother. Down in the cellar, eh? He's not experimenting with that gunpowder again, is he? Uh, oh, no, Mother. Well, we'll see about that. Guy, are you down there? Yes, Mother. What are you doing? I, 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 I'm writing. Uh, yes, that's right. He's, uh, he, he's writing. Oh, very well. What was that? I think he dropped his pen. <laughs> is he? Not bothering with gunpowder, eh? Downstairs, is he? Yes, Mother. Then perhaps you'll tell me who that is coming downstairs from upstairs with a black face. <laughs> Hello, Mother. I heard a noise, so I came downstairs. Guy, you've been messing about with cup gunpowder and bombs again. Oh, no, Mother. Oh, no? What are you holding behind you? If you don't tell me, I'll send you all upstairs to bed. Well, now we're in the bedroom. Go to bed. 
All right, Mama. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Now, listen, listen. I found the solution, chaps. One handful of popped out like this. Now, just put a handful of tricholite with it. Listen. Shh. It's all right. It's all right. I say, let me have a go. All right, don't forget. <laughs> don't forget, but just a handful. All right, now, a handful of pop lard and a handful of trifolite. Now, ready? Yes. <laughs> Big hand. <laughs> quick, quick, into bed before Mother comes. Boys? <sighs> Boys? Yes, Mother. Yes, mother. Mother. Anything the matter? I heard a bang. A bang, Mother? Yes. And boys. Yes, yes. Mother. Where's the roof? <laughs> and so their mother forbade them to mix gunpowder. But she suspected that they were still experimenting secretly. Every night they would go upstairs to bed. Good night, Good night, Good night Mother. Good night, boys. <laughs> then she would go to the front door and let them in. This week, this has happened. Your bedroom must be in a shocking state. Uh, no, Mother, it's all right. It's okay, Mother. Mother, it's fine. Fine, is it? I'll go and see. Then she opened their bedroom door and stepped out into the main street. <laughs> eventually, yes, eventually the Broys grew older and they took an interest in politics. Guy Fawkes was against the government, who, according to him, were all knaves. It was like a well-laid table. Knaves on the right, forks on the left. <laughs> hey, listen, fellas, listen. Listen, we must get rid of this government. I say, supposing we kidnap them. No, 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 no good at all. No, no, no. no. <laughs> here, here, what about a revolution? No, 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 no. Next thing you know, you'll want to blow them all up. <laughs> mm. Boys, where are you going? But it was too late. They had gone. For the next few weeks, they piled up gunpowder underneath the House of Commons. Then came the night. <laughs> Listen, fellas, we've got to get past the night watchman first. Nine o'clock and all's well. And ain't a clock and all's a well. I'll tell you what, when he walks past the end of the alley again, we'll grab him. Good idea. <laughs> Here he comes. Look out. Ain't a clock and all's a well. Steady. And ain't a clock and all's a well. <laughs> that's it, that's it. Now all we have to do is to pass the sentry. I've got an idea. Uh, Follow Walt, me. Who goes there? Friend or sir? Uh, friend. Oh, friend. Oh, well, that's a bit awkward. Now, <laughs> now, the last time I said advanced friend, somebody made one. But, um, wait a minute, it's all right. Here comes my relief. Hello, handsome. Blimey, mother. Boy! <laughs> Quick, through the gates! Oh, halt! Oh, halt! <laughs> And so the chase was on, down long winding corridors to the dungeons. The sentry was so close to their heels that twice they were able to ask him the way. Here we are, here we are. Close the door. Quick, a match. Oh dear, no matches. Wait a minute. Tar. <laughs> Say, where did you get that? Sentry. <laughs> okay, I light the fuse. There. Now, quick, everybody, outside. <laughs> Oh, now we're away from it. Ah, before they find the gunpowder, the whole place will go sky high. Aren't we wicked? <laughs> Steady, any minute now. Ah! What's the matter? What's up? Oh, you fool, that wasn't the fuse. It was the string holding up my trousers. <laughs> Here, let's go back and make sure. Yes, we'll give it another four days. And that, <laughs> and that was how Guy Fawkes blew up the Houses of Parliament. Yes, but steady a moment. According to the history books, Guy Fawkes didn't blow up the Houses of Parliament. I know, but this is a comedy show and we have to have a happy ending. <laughs> Try to 
teach him but what is the good? It just doesn't sink in his head's made of wood. What a problem child is he. You've heard Peter Bruff and Archie Andrews in Educating Archie. With Robert Morton, Hattie Jakes, Max Bygrave, Julie Andrews, the Tanner Sisters, the Headley Ward Trio, and the BBC Review Orchestra conducted by Robert Busby. And this is Peter Madden reminding you to listen on Tuesday next week instead of Monday when... We'll be Despite what Peter Madden said, Archie will be back here on BBC Seven next Sunday. But you can hear this one again this evening at seven.